libraries. They're the signature of our childhood memories and the thorn in the side of cash-strapped local governments who can't afford to keep them. The recession has seen over 200 libraries withdrawn from service since 2011, and many more have been in marked for closures. We're here with Jodie, who's part of the Save Kensal Rise Library campaign. So we're just kind of wondering, what's your involvement with the library? Well, um, I joined the campaign almost from day one, and I've really just been involved with everything from soup to nuts. So, helping do flyers, helping um, with the petitions. My background's in architecture and design, so oh. I really um, know a lot about the building. Yeah, so I've tried to focus on um, issues around the building for planning or development or heritage and listing. Mm -hmm. so it's really been very broad. So, have you been involved in? Uh, going over the laws that are involved with the constraints of the building because it's been grade two listed and it's been having problems with being developed into residential buildings. Yes. Has, have you been part of that with your architectural background? Um, yes, definitely helping um, organise the kind of issues, the main issues that we have. And in fact, I mean, we've been really lucky with the campaign because we've had such great publicity I mean, the heritage of the Mark Twain um, yeah, background of, of the building, that Mark Twain opened the building. Um, we've had people come to us and really offer their services. So, for example, we've had a company also at Ferrells who are planning consultants, yeah. and they offer to um, submit an application for the library for a listed building oh, status yeah. because it's actually not been um, listed by heritage. Oh, it hasn't. No, it's not. Oh. It's locally listed, which means yeah. it's an asset within Brent, but it doesn't have any statutory protection. Uh, so it's not grade two listed? It's not grade two listed. Uh. So we actually have, since the campaign began, um, applied for listing, mm -hmm. and unfortunately it was refused because the interior um. of the building has been so significantly stripped yeah. of all of its original features. So what kind of support do you need from the people in order to make this happen? Well, right now, that's exactly what we need is a lot of support, um, a lot of vocal support, and we need a lot of publicity because we want to put as much pressure as possible onto the developers and yeah. therefore onto the council and onto the planners to avoid changing the use um, to flats unless the community is given a fair deal. We're really willing to listen to the developers, to all souls. We just want to have a fair um, and even level playing field to retain a, a proper community library for, for Kensal Rise, which has had one for over 112 years. Yeah. For more information, go to savekensalriselibrary.org.uk or follow them on Twitter. With such a colourful conflict that involves celebrity writers and Oxford University, how could the Indie Book Show not get involved? We decided to investigate this tangled web of land, property and community law that's managed to anger and frustrate this small community in London. So we're here to chat with Margaret, who's the head of the library company, she's co-chair. And um, we wanted to find out what your involvement in the campaign is. I've just been involved with the rest of the community trying to save the library. So you've been at it from the beginning, have you? Yep. This is our third year. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So we're, um, we've got a few slightly controversial questions. The first being, there are other libraries in Brent, and why is it that people can't the library has been in this community for over 100 years. Um, it's a local library. People are more likely to use a library that's local rather than have to get a bus or a tube to another library. Mm -hmm. I run a children's nursery and we used to walk our children to this library and now we have to catch a tube or a bus. And taking 10, 15, 20 children on a tube is a very different proposition. To walking up the street. Yeah. One of our volunteers, Marcos, he's confined to a wheelchair. I mean, the local tube station doesn't have an escalator, 
It's not accessible. What's he supposed to do? No, just not come to the library or potentially they're going to attend the library. Yep. So it really is practical for the community to have this particular library back open. Yeah, I mean, and it's got more value than simply being a library. It's the one, only one public space that we've got in this community. There's nothing else. Yeah, you know, we don't have a hall or a or a park or, park or anything that we can all use as a kind of space where we can be together without having to pay anything. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. So also importantly, uh, we've heard that all sorts have offered a space within the building to use for the library. How come that hasn't been used or worked on? How come we're not back inside the building already? Just what the issue is been? Right. They have offered a space, but the space is too small for a library. It's about one third of the ground floor. We could either have a children's library or an adult's library or maybe no IT. Or yeah. We're supposed to be running this library and the cost of running it will not be met by such having, you know, activities such in such space. small space. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not worth picking up on the offer because it's not practical. Well, it's not, it's not practical because the library won't be sustainable. Yeah, and it won't get enough. You won't even be able to get all the people in the room. Well, that's Hello, correct. That. Yeah. That's correct. So as Margaret says, they need your support, they need your strength, they need the help of the community.